Okay. Yep, that's cool. Okay. All right, cool. Um, thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> I'm Matthew. Um, I'm one of the people from the Open Australia Foundation. Um, Hanari over there is one of the others. Uh, Tim is from Google. He's um, hosting the space and giving us access to their Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff, so thank you. Um, I really don't want to talk for very long. I just want to really just give you the briefest of overviews of how all the bits and pieces fit together of the projects that we run, just enough so you know where to look for things and stuff like that. But I guess the main thing is if there's anything while I'm chatting, like please interrupt me, ask questions, you know. Um, but there's the rest of the weekend or, you know, today or however long you're here for to ask questions. Um, if it's about, you know, the projects, you can ask any of the three of us. Um, we'll, we'll, we should hopefully know something or hopefully point in the right direction. Um, but uh, I'll say a quick thing. That if you don't know about Open Australia Foundation, we're basically a, a charity. We're um, a not-for-profit. We're nonpartisan. Um, we've got uh, um, charitable tax status and all that kind of gubbins. Um, we run the three projects, openaustralia.org, uh, electionleaflets.org.au and planningalerts.org.au. Um, all our software is open source and it's hosted on GitHub at github.com slash open Australia. So check that out. If you want to have a look at how all the bits and pieces fit together, um, uh, our, we've got some scrapers that are actually hosted on Scraper Wiki, which is this um, site that Hanari is going to tell you about, which is awesome if you want to do anything to do with scraping. It's kind of the way of the future in the scraping world. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll leave that to Hanari to talk about. Um, our site is hosted, uh, we've got a, a VPS basically uh, that's hosted and donated by a, a company called Octopus Computing. So we basically have one VPS on one box that runs all our projects. Um, and we've had that since the start, so that's awesome. Um, OpenAustralia.org, okay. Um, this is OpenAustralia.org, if you haven't seen it before, probably have. Um, it's written in PHP. Uh, it's adapted from um, this uh, UK project called theyworkforyou.com, which I, um, it was written by a group of people uh, in the UK and then uh, taken on by my society who are kind of, you know, the, the, the UK organization that we model ourselves after. They're a charity. They do a whole bunch of civic, pro civic projects. They're really kind of the innovators in this whole space. Um, and so what we did is this was the first project to build. And we forked the code base to kind of adapt it to Australian things. So it's, it's you know, it's pretty rough and ready. Um, but actually the, the biggest kind of part of the work was actually getting getting the data off of the Australian parliamentary site and into into the right format to be sucked up into Open Australia, and um, very few people seem to have noticed, unfortunately. But we actually haven't had any updates on Open Australia.org since about well the last six months, and the reason is is because um, uh, APH.gov.au changed the format that they provide their uh, parliamentary data in yet again. Um, so basically one of the big, one of the really big outstanding tasks is basically to adapt, to rewrite a scraper or a data converter that converts from their XML file format to the one that Open Australia uses. Um, it's, it's a big task to do that and I probably, probably too big a task to, to try to take on in a weekend I would say, um, but if you're, if you're game for it, you know, um, go for it. But don't, please don't underestimate the size of that task because it's actually quite tricky. Um, there's a lot of issues with just maintaining consistency with the old data set and the new data set because because every speech has, has an ID and that ID doesn't come from the original parliamentary data. Yeah, go for it. Why did they change the format? Um, why, why, the question was why did they change the format? Um, the story, the story that we've been told is that they're building a new spangly parliamentary website and they basically uh, 
did a new tender for, for that whole system. And for whatever reason, that involved changing the format. And I haven't had a huge amount of look at it. I think Canary's looked at it more than I have. And, and by all accounts, it's, it has the same problems that the old, old format had. And it doesn't actually fix any of the fundamental things, even though we've told them about some of the fundamental things that they could do to improve it. Like the big suggestion that we asked them, this is years ago now, we just asked that every debate would have a unique ID that they would set. So you could actually say, this debate has this unique ID, and then we take our unique IDs from their thing. And that would simplify so many things, but they didn't do that. So yeah, I, I, but I, I don't think anything has changed on the site so far. So I, maybe it's coming, maybe it isn't. Well, apparently a couple weeks ago. Oh, really? Oh, OK. OK, cool. Should we have a look? <laughs> so, w which bit has it changed? The Parlin Info search? That they were they were launching last month or early this month? Yeah. Is that that's what they've said? Yeah. It, d it looks the same to me. Yeah, they definitely have. Sorry. They definitely have. Oh, okay. And they've been promising as well, I, I, like the, the, um, the register of interests, like the register of interests that we, we, you know, we're the only people that put it online for both the House of Representatives and the Senate. Um, there was like a, a, a committee both in the Senate and the House of Reps that decided that they would publish finally um, all that material on their own websites. And as far as I know, that hasn't yet happened. So. We're still kind of waiting for that to occur because at the moment we're the only, they send us the updates and then we scan them and then put them up on openaustralia.org. And then the, the Senate actually sends us a CD. So they actually do have a scanner. And we've suggested to the House of Reps that maybe they go to the Senate and like scan the register there, but supposedly that's not possible for some reason. <laughs> so it's all very strange. Yeah, yeah, there's some separ separation of concerns there. Um, Okay, so, uh, so that's a bit about Open Australia. Um, tell you a bit about election leaflets, um, which, we, which we ran during the, um, the recent state election in New South Wales and the federal election. And um, Tim and Hanari did a, a, a great job uh, adapting, again, that code base to uh, add more support for multiple elections, because basically this, again, came from the UK. And it turned out that there was sort of partial support for multiple elections in the way that the, the system works in the UK. There, there, there isn't, you don't have those sort of different levels of government with different uh, electoral areas. So we had this sort of extra complexity here where at e each election could have different uh, electorates that are actually physically different areas, which is not necessarily the case, I think, in the UK, or they kind of dealt with it a different way. I'm not entirely sh sure of the details, but anyway. Um, so that, so we have sort of partial support for multiple elections in there right now, and another big outstanding task is to kind of, is, is, to, is to improve that so that you can kind of switch dynamically between different elections and look at past, um, past uh, leaflets and things. Um, I d uh, I'm assuming actually everybody knows what election leaflets does. Does anybody not know? Do I need to explain? No? Okay, okay, cool. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the, 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 this is all written PHP. Uh, the images are hosted on, on Amazon S3. Um, you know, it's sort of, it doesn't, it doesn't have any scraping component to it. So in a sense, this is, you know, this is a pure crowdsourcing effort. Um, so, uh, let's see, where am I? Sorry? Ah, yes, yes. Um, the UK one, um, they actually uh, sort of uh, around the same time that um, Tim and Hanari were, were, were doing the uh, updates with the multiple elections, um, one, one guy took it upon himself to port the PHP code base to Django. 
and the UK version of this site is now running on Django. So, so it might be worth, if, if there are any kind of Django people, it might be worth having a look at that code base and seeing where it sits compared to uh, the PHP fork that we're running and whether those could be merged back together again. Because I mean, one of the things that we've talked about with the UK people is actually not having sort of different uh, national sites, but having one international site that could support elections from multiple countries. So we kind of combine our efforts, um, which would be awesome. Um, but it does require actually getting back in sync with their code base and actually adding anything that that uh, that isn't that isn't supported by by their current one. So, um, but the last project I want to talk about is planning alerts, and the reason I'm leaving it last is because um, it's probably it's it's definitely the easiest one to contribute to, and and I think it would be awesome if everybody here could contribute a bit to planning alerts this weekend. Um, and it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, and you can potentially, with a couple of hours work, um, start something and do it and finish it and wrap it up and have it running on the, on the site. And basically, um, the way planning alerts works is it's a, essentially an aggregator of, of uh, development applications from lots of different councils. And we basically scrape um, the development applications off of council websites. And at the moment, we've got about 100 planning authorities in there. Um, if, if, you're, if you're wondering about the kind of reach of the, the site, um, we've, we've now sent over 2 million development applications out to over 10,000 people who are signed up by email alerts, and over a quarter of a million people have actually used the site since it's been live. So, you know, pretty, pretty sizable, really, given, given what seems like a fairly niche thing, but it's actually something that is astoundingly kind of meaningful to a lot of people. Just, I live here and I want to find out what's going on in my area. So, what, what you can do is basically, um, using Scraper Wiki, which Hanari will talk about, is actually write a scraper for one of the 500 odd local authorities that isn't covered by planning, planning alerts right now. And you can actually go and, you know, add something and finish it, and it can be live on the site. And, and, and I think, you know, that's a, it's a really awesome, surprisingly satisfying thing to do to, you know, add another, you know, 100,000 100, or 200,000 people um, coverage of, of, of uh, on planning alerts. Um, so in terms of the actual web app, um, again, this was adapted from a UK thing. Um, it was written in PHP originally, but the whole thing has been ported to uh, Ruby on Rails and actually massively changed, unlike the other projects that have kind of been tweaked. This thing has kind of undergone a massive change. Um, it's much more, the UK one was really bare bones. You could just basically sign up for an email alert and that was pretty much it. But here you can search online, you can browse, you can see maps, you can even now, most recently, you can actually send uh, comments back to the council. So for certain councils, um, uh, if they have an email email address basically that accepts uh, comments on development applications right there and then. So I mean like, I'll give you an example, Freelander Avenue, Katoomba, where I live. So these are recent, recent things. So here's a nearby um, restaurant that's getting some liquor license transfer or something. Um, and let's say I didn't like that, or I did like it. It says I have 27 days left to officially respond to the application. I can just actually comment directly on the website. And all I have to do, you know, put my name, email address, and the address there as well. Um, that's your address. And the reason that has to be there is because basically, um, uh, councils need that to to satisfy themselves that you're actually a local and not some you know developer pretending to be a local or something like that. But we keep we obviously don't publish the email your email address your physical address at all. That just goes off to the council. That doesn't go anywhere. But what we do do is on this actually development application, you get to see the comments that people have submitted. So you get to see who's actually said something right because. Turns out that when people go and comment on, on development applications, they they 
they are actually technically public. So they go to the council and anybody could go to the council and actually find out what people have said. But of course, that often never, ha that doesn't happen, right? It only happens if it might, might be your house or whatever. Um, so, so a lot of this stuff is kind of semi-invisible and what we're trying to do is just make it a little bit more visible, a little bit more accessible to people. So, um, so yeah, that's basically it. I mean, there's, there's, there's so many things that, this is such a simple way of interacting with this kind of information that, um, that is so much better than the vast majority of local council websites. And, and it's something where, you know, by, if you write a scraper that puts this data into planning alerts, um, you know, instantly all the people in that area will have access to a, a really useful service that they didn't have before. So um, over to Hanari, who's going to tell you about the scraper wiki and how to contribute to planning alerts. Is there anything I haven't said? <laughs>